Well, we're back to doing our videos again. Um, it was a long dry spell there. We did a lot of videos on shotguns and rifles, and uh, everybody seemed to like them, found them interesting and uh, uh, instructional. So uh, I've been busy, 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 but today we're going to take some time out to do a video on uh, handgun restoration. We do a lot of those in the shop, and uh, um, lately it seems like more and more of them are coming in. Uh, Colt Pythons, everybody knows where those things have gone in price and value, and I'm getting a lot of those lately. Those require a completely different style of bluing than I'm used to. That's a high shine on them, uh, you know, that deep shine that a python has. It's a lot of work to get them prepared uh, for bluing that way. Uh, I'm used to kind of doing the browning blue, which is a nice, soft, uh, deep black blue. Uh, uh, we also do kind of a matte blue, they call it a hunter finish, and Browning calls it a stalker finish, it's a flat finish, and it's, it's appropriate for certain models, certain guns. Um, but we're going to go into the uh, restoration end of the handguns today, and uh, we've got a couple of models that we're going to talk about here. Now this thing about restoration, I've been hearing a lot about it over the last few years. People have a thing about restored firearms. They, they think that once a gun's been restored, it's just worthless. Well, in many cases that's true. You all have seen a good many restored, quote, restored guns like I have. And if they're done by an amateur, somebody doesn't know what he's doing, yeah, they're virtually ruined. The value's just gone. Uh, now, today we're going to be doing a high power here that someone is uh, restored, and uh, they virtually ruined this gun. It's just, it's a mess. We're going to try to straighten it out. We'll get, we'll get it straightened out to where it looks like factory. Once you get them back to where they look like factory again, they're worth the money, but they gotta look factory. If they look like they've been restored, you can just forget it. It's not gonna work. So today we're going to be talking about a, a couple of handguns I got in here recently. We've got a, a 1911 45 in the other day. A rough, rough gun man said he found it inside of a wall of a home while he was uh, remodeling. And it's an early 1911. Uh, it's never been totally what I would say restored, but somebody's put some aftermarket ugly looking sights on it, which are going to take the value away from it. We're going to remove those sights, put factory sights back on it, factory grips. And we're going to restore this gun the way it needs to be restored to make it look factory again. Uh, we also got in a high power, Browning high power. Uh, the Browning high power, uh, of course in 1911 too, both of these were inventions, inventions of John Browning's. John Browning said that uh, in his mind he thought the Browning High Power would be everything that the 1911 wasn't. Uh, that didn't really turn out to be totally true. Everybody loves that High Power, or not High Power, but the 1911. And uh, believe me, they like those High Powers too. They're a wonderful gun. I love them. They're one of my favorites. So we have this early loop hammered uh, High Power that someone's tried to re blue and uh, they've done a job on it. We'll zoom in on it in a minute and I'll show you what we're talking about. So we're going to start with these two guns here and um, we're going to uh, break them down and we're going to replace parts and sights that need to be done. We're going to square up and repair and straighten out a lot of rounded corners and funneling. Uh, if, if you really don't know what you're doing when it comes to bluing these guns, just don't do them because you'll, you'll just ruin them. Uh, I straighten them out every week where they've been out in, uh, out in uh, these shops done by amateurs that uh, They've just done a job on them, so we'll uh, we'll get started on them here, and we'll break them down, and we'll go through the uh, the, the tear down process and what we're looking for, and uh, we'll uh, get into the restoration on these two. All right, let's go ahead and tear this bad boy down. Uh, rounding high power. Uh, we uh, first off we start by removing the clip, and uh, now we're going to take the uh, slide from the gun. Uh, your safety here. There's a notch right up here on the slide. Uh, when the gun's on safe, of course, you know, that's on safe back there. Now, to re disassemble the gun, to remove the slide, we're going to slide this slide back and push the safety up into it and that holds it open. Now, when you do that, that aligns uh, your uh, slide hold open latch button and all to where it'll come right out. So, pop, just push it from the opposite side and take out your slide latch. Uh, then, hold on to the slide and drop the safety down and when you do that all the slides are going to slide right off the front. Now we'll go ahead and break down the slide. Now you guys that are just wanting to field strip your gun and clean it, I'll get you to that point. Uh, we're going 
disassemble this one completely because we're going to blue it. Uh, so go ahead and remove your recoil spring. Pull that out. Your barrel just lifts up and out. Now, for cleaning purposes, that's a good start. Let's go ahead and remove the firing pin. To remove the firing pin, there's a latch here uh, that uh, is uh, dovetail. And to remove the firing pin, you just push in on the firing pin and lift up on this uh, firing pin retainer. Hold on to that firing pin, so it's going to want to take off on you. Slide that retainer up and out. Then, of course, your firing pin and spring will come out. You need to take those out and clean those. Now, I'm going to go ahead and remove the uh, connector uh, because we're in the process of, uh, of uh, full restoration here. We're going to be bluing this gun, so uh, we need to remove it also. And uh, in order, and also, let's go ahead and take out our extractor. This is an early model, uh, so the extractor is a long extractor. Uh, it's held into place by your firing pin retainer. Now, to remove that extractor, just slide, just kind of hook whatever you got into the notch and pop it out. And out comes your extractor. Extractor gone. Okay, now you have to get those two parts out before you can take out your uh, connector. And uh, once you've uh, got those out of the way, uh, you can. Uh, and these usually just kind of pop out. But that one's stuck a little bit. Tap it to release it. This is an early model, so it's a little different from the later models. This is the pin that holds the connector in place. And there it is. Now this light is torn down completely. Uh, the later models have just a pin going down through the extractor on top here. And uh, they're a little harder to get out. It's a roll pin, so you kind of need a roll pin punch to do it. Now, I'll take this over to Vice later on. I'll remove this rear sight uh, to get it ready for bluing. Let's go ahead and tear down the, uh, the frame. You've got uh, two screws that hold your, uh, just one screw holds each panel on, grip panel. Go ahead and take those off. Get those out of the way. This gun we're going to re restore completely. We're going to finish these grips. The grips have been used and worn, and the check rings all wore off of them. We're going to recut all that and, and uh, straighten that out. Now we're going to uh, take out this. This is your clip retainer, and this removes just like a like a 1911. You push it out from the push on your button, and when you do, it's going to align this little keeper over on the other side and lift it right out, just like a 1911. Uh, then reach in here and rotate 90 degrees and that'll take the uh, retainer out in the spring. All right, now we're going to remove the, uh, uh, I think we'll start by removing the sear. And uh, you can drop the hammer if you want when you do that. Uh, doesn't matter really one way or another. Drive out the, uh, the sear retaining pin. And uh, Pull it out, kind of hold on to your sear, it may want to take off on you. There's your sear, it just kind of falls out. Uh, now your uh, sear spring is this long flat spring here. It'll bring the hammer back a little bit and that will release that to where it should come up and out like so. There's your sear spring. Now this is your ejector. This ejector kind of rotates around once you get the pin out of it. Uh, once you get the sear pin out, the sear pin keeps this ejector in place. Now, in order to remove your safety, you can't just pull it straight out and that won't come out. You have to rotate down this ejector. And then, you should be able to just push that safety from the other side. You might have to tap it a little bit. And uh, that'll release it. Let's put something under here. Right over there it is. Safety comes right out. Uh, your ejector. Your... Uh, Hammer and mainspring housing is all one piece. I remove, when I blew these guns, I like to remove, some guys blew them uh, with the uh, um, mainspring in place. I don't really like to do that. So to remove the mainspring, you have to take whatever you can kind of get a hold of here. I'll use some end cutters here. Maybe turn it in a little bit. 
Now, if you're just breaking a gun down to clean it, don't don't do this. That's it's just not necessary. There's a little tiny pin right here, and the only way you can kind of get it relieved is to uh, crank down the uh, uh, the little keeper there. Pull that little pin out. Careful, don't lose it. Now you can unscrew this, and uh, your mainspring will come out, and that gun is completely torn down and ready for uh, blue. We'll take that out later. The clip, I, you need to break it down. This is an early uh, clip. Uh, you need to, uh, there's a little keeper on the back, kind of pop that forward a little bit. It's uh, hooked on the back. You have to get that down. Let's see if I can pop it down here with a punch or something. And then it should slide forward. That was a little stubborn. Real stubborn clip. The uh, the spring on this one's real stout, but we won't worry about too much about that. We'll take it out later. We're gonna just lift this clip up. I'm gonna put it in a vise where I can kind of get a hold of it and get both hands on. Slide this plate off the end. Break down the uh, uh, clip and get it ready to blue. Now we're not gonna blue this uh, follower here because this follower I can see is aluminum. Looks like somebody's already tried to blue it because it's kind of eating on a little bit. They probably threw it in the bluing tank a little bit not knowing what they were doing and it commenced to fizz and do funny things and they probably stopped it but it, it has eaten a little bit on the uh, follower. Uh, the gun, virtually one more item here, we have to remove our uh, trigger. And uh, I go from the right side to the left, tap out the trigger retaining pin and then rotate it up. Here's your, here's the connector here. Reach in and pull it out. And then rotate the trigger down and push in on the plunger and rotate it out the bottom. So the clip is torn down, or clip, the uh, frame is torn down completely and uh, ready to blue at this point. Now we're going to get our camera set up. We're going to zoom in on some of the bad points, uh, some of the things that have been done to this gun that we're going to try to correct and straighten out. Uh, we'll get a real close up so you can see how badly it's been uh, butchered up. Uh, by someone who didn't know what they were doing. And we'll show you what we're gonna to do to straighten that out. All right, we're still in the uh, teardown process on this high power. I was having a little trouble getting my uh, little clip released on my uh, um, uh, magazine here, my clip. Uh, so while you guys weren't looking, I popped that thing up and got it. Anyway, now this will all pull off and uh, come out, hang on to things, because it's gonna to wanna to shoot out on you. And take this follower out, because these off times are aluminum. As, as I can see, they tried to blue, someone tried to blue this. this. This was done by somebody that didn't understand alloys and bluing. You cannot blue aluminum, pot metal, that sort of thing. So it looks like they threw it in the tank for a while. I'll probably replace that. It'll probably work, but it looks so bad. When you put these in the bluing salts, you know you've made a mistake because they instantly start to fizz and froth around. You know there's some aluminum in there. Uh, apparently they caught it before it totally... If you leave it in long enough, you pull out nothing. You, you, pull, you leave it in long enough, uh, an alloy, aluminum part, you'll pull out your wire and there won't be anything hanging on it. Then it contaminates your salt. So don't do that. So our magazine's apart and we'll, we're going to blue the magazine body. Uh, now, this frame, <clears throat> um, they haven't hurt it really too much. There's a... Uh, there's a Nazi proof mark that's going to really make this gun worth a lot of money. There's a, a, some small lettering in here that I can barely see myself, so I know you can't see it. Uh, these, these mean a lot to a collector. Now, we're going to save those, and what we can't save, if they've really been kind of hacked on and washed and buffed, we will uh, have our engraver hand engrave those back in, uh, back in place. The serial number is good and deep on this gun. Uh, if in our polishing, you know, the serial numbers get light, we will put them back in. Uh, this would be hand engraved in. We can do them on a pantograph or you can hand stamp them in some cases. When it comes to serial numbers, now you cannot legally remove serial numbers. You don't do that. Now, if you're polishing and they're lightened up something, I get a lot of guns in too that serial numbers are very light. You can hardly read them. We enhance them, bring them back so that they're legible. You never change a serial number on a gun. ATF doesn't like that. It's against the law. Um, you're not legally supposed to have a gun in a shop that has an altered serial number, so we stay away from those. Um, just something uh, for your information there. Now this gun, they've uh, 
done some things here. They've uh, uh, these frames are generally they have kind of a sharp little line that comes along here. They really wash that out. We're going to square that all up so we have a nice sharp crease here. Uh, we're going to sharpen up all these edges and all, uh, and get this frame ready to blue. Uh, it's got some uh, uh, pretty deep pitting along under the uh, the uh, grip panel. We're going to bee blast those pits out and clean them out good. We're not going to remove them because they're pretty deep, but the grip panel will cover that. So that's what we have to do on the frame. The slide, it's got some issues. They buffed it really hard. Um, they kind of washed and lightened up the uh, engraving. The proof marks, Nazi proof mark, and all shows up pretty good, even though we may have to have it touched up a little bit um, by the uh, our engraver who hand engraves those back in. Uh, it's probably going to lose some lettering because there's some deep pitting around the lettering. I hope it shows up. But there's some pitting around this lettering that's going to have to be removed. You can't blue over pits. Pits have to go. So the lettering on this no doubt will have to be uh, hand lettered, uh, hand engraved back in so it'll all look factory again. We're going to get rid of all these rough polish marks. Uh, we're going to sharpen up the creases and the corners and get it back to uh, where it looks like factory. One other item I noticed that was really worked on hard was the slide hold open latch. It looks like someone took it over and just ground it on a, some kind of a, we call them lee wheels or an abrasive wheel. They just ground and really did it, just did a number on us. We're going to square all that up and get all that out of there so it all looks factory again. The gun's good mechanically. It really doesn't need much uh, that I can see um, other than just some cosmetic work to get it straightened up. Uh, while I uh, was off camera, I went ahead and took this uh, rear side out, put it over in a vise and drove it out. They're pretty tight. You want to get those out of there. You don't want to blue around that. Get that out of there. Uh, other than that, the gun now it's ready uh, to get down on the polishing and get it ready uh, to drop in the tank. So uh, we'll uh, get to work on this and uh, show you how to straighten all this back up so it looks like a factory gun again. Okay, we're going to commence to break down this early 1911. I don't really need to go into any real details on this. You guys probably know more about these than I do. They're, uh, 1911s are just one of the easiest guns to tear down and uh, uh, get ready for bluing. I have a, uh, the uh, follower in the magazine, as you know, comes out a little differently. you got to bring the spring down and capture it, which I've already done here. Um, so our magazine's all broke down and ready here. Now, the uh, slide is, uh, I've taken out my... Uh, slide hold open latch and now the slide's going to come off completely. Uh, we're going to pull it down. I'm not, I'm not going to go too much into you know assembly, disassembly on 1911 because you know everybody knows how to do those but uh, we're going to go ahead and tear it down what we can here. We're On this gun we're going to really focus more on the uh, restoration end of it and uh, get it uh, uh, ready for bluing and uh, so that's what we're going to focus on there. So. Uh, now, these ugly sights have to go. They've, they've got these uh, aftermarket sights. We're going to get rid of those. Get this barrel out of the way here. Barrel slides out through the front. Uh, we're going to get rid of these ugly aftermarket sights. We've got the uh, new rear sight that we're going to put in to replace it. This little, uh, this, this big old ugly blade they put on here, we're going to get rid of that. We're going to put the little small bead back on. That's silver soldered on. Um, we'll go into that uh, in detail a little more in just a little bit. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and uh, kind of get things broke down here. These are some aftermarket grips for this uh, gun. Uh, our customer kind of wants basically the same kind of grip on. That's not, that's not an original grip, it doesn't appear to me. Um, but 1911 uh, grips are everywhere out there. There's every kind of grip that you could ever think of. Uh, I see this one when I took it out. The grip bushing came unscrewed. I'll work on that later. They have to be staked. And you can buy the, any part from Brownells or Midway that you want for these guns. Um, sometimes you need to replace these uh, uh, script, uh, screw bushings. Uh, that one came unscrewed on me there, which is kind of odd. We'll just lock tight it back in when we put it back together. I think at the factory they're staked, but we're going we're gonna to just lock tight it in place so it stays in. Um, get our uh, get our grips out of the way and uh, get those up out of the way here. Now we're we'll just go ahead. Well, let's go ahead and remove as as in the the Browning high power. Of course, the uh, the clip uh, retainer is the same thing. Pulls up and rotates. 
90 degrees and comes out. Sometimes they're a little more. I may have to get over here a little bit where I can push on a little harder. Rotates around. Comes out. That one, was, that one turned a little hard for me, but it came out. Go ahead and hang on here and remove the retainer and the spring. Okay. Now let's go ahead and uh, take out our uh, main spring housing. Now, when you're bluing these guns, it's critical that you remove that mainspring. You don't want to blue them and leave them in there. Um, that packs it with salts and fills up with salts. And you all know how to take these out. Probably. We'll go through it a little bit anyway. So there's your um, mainspring uh, coming out. Hang on to it. It's going to want to shoot out there. There it is. Uh, there's your mainspring and follower. Get that out of the way. And uh, of course, to remove your uh, safety cock the hammer back and uh, slide it up and out. And when you take that out, also your uh, uh, grip safety will come out. This one's sticking a little bit on me. A little, a little tab it and loosen it up and get it out of there. Shouldn't have to loosen it much. So, might have to drop it. It's been a long time since I've done one of these. I, get, I forget sometimes. They get cold on me. But no, you have to bring the hammer back. That was just sticking. Normally, you wouldn't have to tap on it or do anything to bring it loose. It just fall out. This one's not. Anyway, that one's not coming out. We'll get out here a little bit off camera. But let me talk about this gun a little bit. Um, it's an early gun. It was uh, the man said he found it inside of a wall of a house. He was... Uh, 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 renovating and it's really pitted the frame is pitted uh, quite a bit the, uh, there's lettering on it United States property uh, to remove all that pitting I would remove some of that lettering and I'm not sure I'm going to do that I'm considering on this gun there's a lot of pitting on the frame quite a bit of pitting and I don't really want to remove that lettering even though it is deep model of 1911 US Army I just don't want to remove any of that this gun I'm probably going to do what we call a soft matte blue on it just probably leave the pitting in it kind of camouflages it but it gets gets the pitting the rust so it stops coming out what we'll do is we'll do a fine bead blast on this and that's going to clean out all the pits get the rust out of them and then we're going to hit it on a wire wheel which will bring up a little bit of a sheen to it then we'll blue it that way, and that gun will look really good. Yeah, the pits will still be there, but they'll kind of be camouflaged, um, and it'll just improve on the looks of it a whole lot. That way I won't be removing a lot of this lettering. And uh, on a gun like this, you don't want a high, deep shine anyway. Uh, we could just do a matte blue on it, which means we'll bead blast it and blue it. Uh, we might even do that, but we'll probably hit it on the wire wheel just a little bit just to burnish a little shine up, and uh, it'll greatly improve on this gun. But um, we'll get this broke down and get into works on it and uh, see what we end up with uh, towards the end and see what we can do to save this gun, make it look a little better. Okay, I got the rest of this apart here. I was having a little trouble getting my safety out and all. I don't do a lot of these and I feel like an idiot because everybody knows how a 1911 comes apart. Everybody with me, it seems. Uh, but I've got it all broke down now. Uh, we can go ahead and remove our hammer pin. Uh, our sear pin, get this all out of the way here, and uh, then I'm going to show you uh, what uh, we're dealing with uh, in, in the way of uh, pitting. Maybe we'll be able to zoom in on them a little better. Get uh, this out of the housing there. Let's go ahead and get the, uh, the disconnector and the sear out, and go ahead and slide out the trigger. <clears throat> okay, there again. Um, there's lettering on this gun that I really don't want to remove. If I did, it's not a big, big deal because my engraver could hand engrave that and put it back in. But this gun, we're, I don't think we're going to do a lot of heavy polishing on it. Uh, and there again, these, these ugly aftermarket sights have to go. And a lot of people say, oh, you're restoring that gun and you're going you're gonna to ruin that gun. No, we're not going to restore We're trying to get it back to where it looks a little more factory. Get these ugly sights off of here and get the original factory sights on. Uh, we're going to bead blast out all this pitting and clean it out a little bit. There again, I think we're going to just uh, probably give this kind of a soft blue afterwards and 
the pitting that's in it would probably leave it. It's got a big wingy, a big ding up here on the top of the uh, slide. I'm going to draw a file that out and get that out of there. Uh, so that's kind of gone. Uh, there's a lot we can do to improve on this gun and make it look better. Now there again, I didn't get everything totally apart here. Uh, these are like the high power. The, uh, to remove the firing pin, you just slide the uh, retainer out and then your uh, firing pin comes out. Same thing, of course, on the extractor. Uh, once you get the firing pin retainer out, you'll be able to pry out your extractor. And that one's stuck pretty good. It's, this gun's really rusty and a lot of parts are rusted in place. We'll get it out later. But anyway, this is a cosmetic thing. Mechanically, this gun looks pretty good. I don't see a lot of worn or damaged parts. It's just a cosmetic thing to make it look better. We're going to do what we can to improve on it. And I think you'll see towards the end we'll, we're going to perform a miracle on this old gun and make it look a whole lot better. Okay, I'm, uh, you guys out there in the gun business, if you don't have one of these bead blast cabinets, you are up a creek. You have to have one of these. I don't know how anybody can run uh, a gun restoration, firearm restoration business without a bead blast cabinet. They're not that expensive, you can buy them used. You gotta have, we use a fine bead, a number 13 bead. It's just as fine as flour. And it'll bead that rust right off of those parts right now. And if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do a matte blue, well that's, you just throw in the tank the way it is. And it's kind of bead blast, it'll come out of dull, frosty blue. Bluing, all those bluing tanks do is turn things black. They don't hide anything, they don't do. If you put this in as bead blasted, it's gonna come out of dull black. If I shine this up to a real high shine, it's going to come out real black shiny. So anyway, I have beaded this off. This thing has a lot of deep pitting, but we'll go in and kind of zoom in on it and, and look a little closer at some of the pitting and uh, get an idea of what we're going to do to straighten out this old gun. Okay, I'm back from that bead blast cabinet. Again, I, re I reiterate, you have to have a bead blast cabinet if you're going to be in the firearm business, especially in the restoration end of it. you got to get one. Remember number 13 beads. That's the finest beads out there. They're wonderful. They don't really remove anything or do any damage. Now, I do use some number eight beads. If I want to rough up the top of a slide, I've got another bead blast cabinet. We've got two of them. It has number eights in it. We can rough it up and, and uh, uh, you know, do it like a matte blue on the slide. So uh, anyway, I'm back from my bead blast cabinet. Uh, this gun has a lot, a lot of pitting. Uh, I could remove it. I could get that pitting out, but if I do, as you can see, it's going to lose all that lettering. Uh, I just don't want to take it out. I just don't want to do it. Uh, I do have a hand, a guy that engraves, he's really good at it. He could put every bit of that back on there. Yeah. But I'm not going to do it on this old gun. The only thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take out this big wing up here. I'm going to draw a file. That bothers me. I don't like that. That's not a big deal to get it out. Uh, and that, that, that slide right there is ready to blue. Uh, that's what it's going to look like when it goes in the tank, and it's going to come out looking just like that. That that blowing process is not going to hide any of that pitting. It's not going to fill it. It's going to be there. You're going to see it. But I've got the rust out of it. That's the main thing. It's not going to continue to eat and, and rust the metal. Um, so we've done. Now I want to show you the. I, I just got back out of my blast cabinet, and I bead blasted off with number 13 beads. The frame. The frame is not bad on this gun, really. I didn't wire wheel it yet, so you can kind of see how it's kind of a flat, dull gray. If I throw it in a bluing tank like that, it's going to come out looking just like that, and only it'll be black. Um, and we do a lot of blue jobs like that. Guys, you know, uh, could possibly do it on this gun. If you do do this matte blue on them, I might matte blue it. Matte bluing tends to kind of camouflage pitting. Uh, it'll it'll tend to camouflage it, make you know, so it's not as noticeable. I mean, you're going to see it. It's there, and you can't hide it. So um, uh, I may just, no, I'll have to think about it, but we'll see uh, towards the end what I do. Now you can see I've removed the sights. I've got to get the sights back on. Um, that takes a little work. I've got to silver solder this front bead on, the original bead. You got rid of those big aftermarket ugly looking things. So we're going to improve on this old gun, and uh, uh, it's, uh, it's going to enhance the value a little more. You know, before it was just a big glob of rust. At least we got the rust off of it. but. Uh, it's going to have a lot of character because it's going to have plenty of pitting left in it. But this is a good candidate here, and uh, we're going to blow it this coming week. Uh, we'll wrap up our video on it next week, and we'll see the finished product on it. You, I think you'll be surprised.
Well, we're still in the process of restoring these two uh, handguns that we uh, came up with the other day. They were pretty bad shape and uh, had been unprofessionally blued and uh, really uh, both of them had been really beat up pretty bad by somebody out there that wasn't really sure what they were doing and uh, uh, we had a lot of restoration work to do on them to get the lettering and the engraving back uh, on them which we have done. Um, of course our next process will be to blue it and after we blew it we're going to uh, assemble it. So we'll get into that and at the end we hope to have a couple handguns that look like new again. So um, let's look at uh, uh, the progress here and see what we've got and uh, we'll get into them and kind of do some close-ups here so we can see how the engraving came out. Okay, our high power. We have uh, this is a Nazi proofed high power we just got back from the uh, engraver and uh, he's replaced all the lettering on the uh, side of the uh, slide on the left side. On the uh, right side there wasn't much over here but he did uh, 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 deepen up the serial numbers they were a little light and uh, uh, deepened those a little bit so they looked uh, much better uh, I was really impressed with the work he did uh, these uh, small little proof marks here have the uh, the swastika in them and all and if you, you almost have to have a magnifying glass to see them he used a magnifying glass when he put them in and uh, uh, it really looks good now it's all sharpened back up. We took all the rounded edges off the uh, the uh, frame and the slide where it had been very unprofessionally blued. And uh, this gun is not ready to go into the bluing tank. We're going to blue it today. Now, of course, my we won't get too deep into the bluing because I have videos out there that you have seen, I know, uh, on how we blew. So we won't get into that too much. Now, here's our, uh, our uh, 1911 that's uh, been returned to us. Uh, Lettering was all very light and some of it completely removed. Uh, that's all been replaced. The uh, Pony uh, Colt uh, insignia has been all replaced. Uh, this gun was really, really rough, very rough. Uh, replaced all the lettering on the uh, both sides of the, the frame and the slide. And uh, this gun is uh, all straightened up and uh, ready for the uh, bluing tank. Uh, remember it had those uh, funky aftermarket sights on it. We've uh, replaced it with the proper blade in the front and the rear sights been replaced. So um, these guns are now headed to the bluing tank and they're prepped and ready to blue. As you'll see they're not too shiny. We uh, have just kind of a nice soft satin sheen to them. That's the way we want them. You don't want a real high gloss gaudy uh, you know, blue on a uh, uh, high power or a 1911 either one. It just doesn't look right now. Now we're on doing a lot of cold pythons lately. Now this gun is buffed and polished and, and ready to be blued. As you can see, it's very, very shiny. We've rag wheeled this and really buffed it up to a high shine. This particular Colt, we had to replace some of the lost lettering. The uh, pony was replaced on it, uh, been all sharpened up. When we polish these pythons, we find that pony just, if there's any pitting around at all, it's more burr than it is anything. And when you polish that pitting out, the, the uh, little Colt insignia of the pony, the, uh, what we call the pony, is uh, lightened up. But this gun's got more of a shine to it, and that's what you want. Pythons are that way. They have high high shine to them, a deep black, whereas our, uh, our 1911s and our high powers here, they're more of a subtle black. They're not as, not as much of a deep shine to them. So we'll get these in the tank today, and uh, in the next couple of days we'll finish this video. We'll assemble these, and we'll look at the finished product and see what, how they came out, and hopefully they... Uh, look like a new factory gun. Well, that's what we're anticipating.
All right, we're still continuing uh, with our uh, restoration on uh, the uh, 1911 45 and our Browning high power. Um, we have since uh, broke these guns down and polished them. We've uh, replaced uh, lost lettering and proof marks. Uh, we straightened up a lot of buffed edges that were rounded and radius and funneled out holes. We repaired all that from this previous quote restoration. Bad blue job. Uh, I see them like that all the time. So we're in the process of trying to salvage uh, these two guns. I think we've done it. So uh, we've got them back uh, from the engraver now. They've been touched up. Uh, lettering's been uh, uh, replaced and uh, proof marks have been replaced and uh, uh, we polished them and we've uh, got the right polish on so everything looks factory. And uh, let's, uh, we'll continue now and uh, put this uh, high power back together so we can kind of get some instruction on how to do that. It's simple, but I'll run through the assembly of the high power for you. All right, we're going to uh, commence to assemble this Browning high power. It's come back from the uh, engraver. He has very professionally replaced the lost lettering. Uh, the lost proof marks have been replaced. Uh, the serial number was kind of light. He's deepened up the serial number. Uh, we have polished this gun. Uh, to a nice satin luster. We didn't go too shiny. We don't want a real flat blue. We want to try to make it look as factory as we can. Let's um, let's let's assemble it. Here's our uh, this connector goes in with the hook to the rear. Drops in. This is the old style. Uh, uses a little different retaining system. The new style has just a uh, a uh, roll pin that holds that link in place. Uh, they simplify things a little bit. Uh, they work just as well. This is the old style. We have this little retainer here that slides in. This, you have to put this in first before you do your extractor or your firing pin uh, because uh, the extractor and the firing pin hold this in place. Uh, let's put in our uh, extractor. This is the long extractor. Uh, the old style, the new style has a short extractor that's held in by a roll pin. Um, both of them seem to work well. But these are a little more desirable, I think, than uh, the uh, new style. The guys seem to like them better. This is an old style Nazi proof high power. It's really a nice gun. So we can have our extractor in place. Now, next will come our firing pin. Goes in, and then our retaining plate. These you have to put in with, uh, uh, they slide right into the T slots. Got to push your firing pin in. Hopefully it doesn't come shooting out on you. Hold it in place. Like so. Then tap it in place. Now, basically that slide is assembled. It's together and ready to go. We'll go ahead and drop in our barrel. And then uh, our recoil spring goes in like thus. So, the uh, slide is together. We have uh, we have buffed this uh, bowl, or the uh, barrel, I mean. We've buffed that to a little bit of a satiny sheen, gotten some rust freckles off of it. Uh, has a Nazi proof mark right on the barrel, serial number on the barrel. And these are really desirable, really neat guns. Uh, I uh, have already uh, installed the rear sights. We, we don't blew it with those in place. I just put it in to kind of speed things up a little bit. Another thing I have done, we're going to assemble the, uh, the frame. Uh, don't glue these with uh, your mainspring in place. Uh, we have uh, just a few minutes ago I put this mainspring back on. Uh, there's a little keeper that holds that in place, and a little pin. I've done that just to kind of speed up the video here, but don't don't glue those in place. Now, this hammer's turned kind of a plum color, which means maybe we could have left it in the tank a little longer. I think it looks kind of nice myself, but this is hardened, it's heat treated, so sometimes it's not left in the tank long enough they they turn a little reddish on you. Let's put our trigger in first. Some guys, this uh, particular plunger right here, this is uh, this uh, when your uh, magazine comes up into place, it pushes in on this, and so this gun won't work unless the magazine's in place. This uh, plunger in the trigger. Some guys take this out, that way uh, you don't have to have a magazine in, you can dry fire the gun or what have you. This is in place, and so we'll just leave it. Now we've got a uh, connector here. I put these in 
kind of roll it in. There's a uh, kind of a uh, little half moon shape here, and this spring goes down on top of it. I put it in place, and then you push in on this, this plunger, and it kind of rolls over into place there. Now, this can get a little tricky holding that in place and putting it in the gun. If you've done a few, you'll be able to do it, but it actually goes in after you put your trigger in. Now, put your trigger in by coming right through here, through the guard, push up on your uh, magazine plunger block, push that up in place, and then uh, your trigger should pop right up in place. I'm trying not to get my hands in the way here so I can see what we're doing. Okay, trigger's going up and in. And roll this in like so. And I hook that spring under the frame that we were talking about. Kind of get it out of the way. Now's the time to put in your connector here. And uh, you'll have to push on the plunger. Kind of get it to seat in place. And that spring goes down on top of it. And uh, it's a little tricky. Sometimes you got to kind of, you know, manipulate it around to get it in there. This is about the, one of the hardest part of the assembly is getting that little spring and everything just right. Um, we'll try that and see if we got it. We're going to back out here and hook our spring on the front. That's our trigger return spring. And then we're going to bring this trigger down. And this link has its own little slot that sits in in the frame here. So we're going to bring this trigger down, try to get everything in position. Feels pretty good. I don't think it's quite seated in there. Sometimes you gotta play with this a little bit to get them right. Uh, like I say, out of the whole assembly, this is usually about the trickiest of them all is getting that everything there just the, the way you want it. All right, we've got the, we've got it in the position. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, tap our pin, our trigger retaining pin, in place here. Now you can test this to make sure it's right. Uh, by uh, pushing on the uh, magazine block plunger. And your connector here should rotate back and forth like that one does. So that, that's in right. Everything there is good. They're a little tricky sometimes, but it can be done. All right, next, let's put in the uh, magazine retainer. And these are just like a standard 1911, no difference. Put it in, rotate it for the turn. Drop it in, and then rotate a quarter turn. Okay, it's in position. All right, next, let's do our uh, hammer. Drop our hammer in position here. And what I do is I take our safety and I kind of put it in there just to kind of hold things in position. Let's go ahead and put our injector in. This is the injector. It slides in, drops down. It's rotated uh, 90 degrees for assembly. And, uh, um, all right, here's our safety. Let's go ahead and rotate it around in position. Push the plunger out of the way, it drops in. Now, our magazine, our, uh, our mainspring here is not really where it needs to be yet. So I kind of get over in position and pull it back on your hammer and then pop it back against the frame. Then rotate up your ejector. Now this is all in position. This is your sear spring. This uh, on the front here goes forward. The spur here. Put that in, and then draw back your main spring a little bit to get it out of the way. Might block it here a little bit because it's got to manipulate it around here. There it is. It's in position. And everything's up and ready to go. Now, the next move, I kind of recommend putting it in a vise. I'll try to do it here without it, see if that works. We're going to put the sear in the place where it belongs. Sear goes like so, the flat on the top. Uh, you've got, you need about, the reason I kind of recommend putting it in a vise is you need about three hands to hold things in position. Uh, you put your sear in, you have to get it up against the sear spring, you have to hold your ejector in the position where it belongs, and you got to try to do all that at one time. 
and that that's that's the trick so uh, we'll have to put in a vise I, I can fight it here and after a while I can get it but let's let's put in a vise it takes about 10 seconds to, to do it the right way all right we're going to put our sear in the position I put it over the vise you just gotta about have three hands when you go put that in when your sear is in the right position I told you the flat up I mean the, the smaller flat uh, they only go one way so you can't really make a mistake on that but when you put it in that vise you can kind of hold your ejector up you can pull your sear spring back you can hold your sear you gotta kind of be a contortionist to do that you can do it without the vise but you're going to tinker with it and talk a lot of bad names in the process. Put our uh, slide on the uh, frame, like so. Bring it all the way back. There's two notches. This notch here is when the gun is on safety. This notch is for holding that slide in position. Hold it to the rear. When it does that, it makes things assemble right here. Uh, and then it's together. Now, these are the old style safeties. Uh, they're tight. They, uh, I kind of like the new ones that have a little like, extension on them. That's kind of the only thing I've really got against the high powers. These safeties can be kind of small and hard to work. Uh, the new ones, uh, they just you can get a hold of them better. This one works. This one's pretty free for the old style. So our frame is together. Now these grips that we had on this gun were really in bad shape. So we have refinished them and we've recut the check ring. And uh, let's go ahead and put those in to a position here. And uh, basically we'll be together after that. And uh, this gun will be looking like a new gun again. Uh, it was an expensive uh, restoration job with the hand lettering and uh, engraving. Anytime you're paying an engraver to hand engrave items, you're gonna, it's not going to be too cheap. It's going to cost you. So let's go ahead and put our grips on. They're the easiest thing in the whole assembly here. Uh, that's, that's about the easiest part of it all. Now this gun had a lot of pitting on it. It still has some pitting under the grips. We have bead blasted out all this pitting. You can't really get it out, it's so deep. But we beaded, blasted it all out, cleaned all the rust out of it. So it's not gonna rust anymore. And of course the grips will cover it. We will cover that. And uh, I'll show you something else here when, about our magazine when we go to put it in. Whoever blew this gun uh, tried to blew the follower in the magazine. Just one problem, it's aluminum, it's alloy. And it ate on it a little bit, I'm going to have to replace it. But uh, just put the gun together. With it. You can see how it's kind of all pitted here. They threw it in the bluing salts, tried to blew it. When you do that, you get a lot of fizzle and sputter, and you know you've done something wrong. Uh, so this follower needs to be replaced, but that's, we'll do that later. We'll, put our, we'll, we'll bring the gun, bring the slide back to make sure it locks open, the slide lock here. Uh, we'll uh, pull our trigger back and drop the slide, and uh, make sure the gun disconnects. Get the slide out of the way. Make sure it disconnects. It does disconnect. Uh, this uh, slide latch here was all rounded and funneled off. We have squared all that up. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the blue we put on this gun. As you can see, it's a nice deep black blue. There's a little sheen to it. It's not a real high, gaudy shine. Uh, it's, uh, we're trying to attempt to make things look factory. So we don't want to put a real high shine on that. Now, you can do different kind of blues. Here's a little Ruger we did the other day and we did this gun was really really rough and the man didn't want to spend a lot of money on it I understand that so we did what we call a, a hunter finish or a satin blue a matte blue really what that amounts to is we bee blast it and we throw it in a bluing tank it looks nice I like it, it it's just uh, you know for a hunting gun it looks good <clears throat> um, or we've been doing a run on uh, We've had a run on pythons here lately, We're doing a lot of pythons anymore, you know how those things have gone. Now pythons have a real deep, very shiny blue to them. So when we polish the buff high powers, we have to go an extra step and rag wheel them and get them to a high shine. Because a high power, a uh, high power, a python should have a, a real high uh, shine to it. That one there does, here's a six inch we've done. 
uh, you'll see the, uh, the the finish on the metal very bright and shiny. That's the way pythons are supposed to look. These particular pythons, I say probably 75% of them we do here lose this little logo, the pony logo. Uh, if there's any pitting around that at all, that's more of a burr than anything. So when you polish it, it kind of polishes it out. So I say probably 75% of them we do in the shop here, we have to replace it and we have it hand engraved. Some of them too that are rough will lose lettering. Uh, this particular one lost some lettering on the barrel uh, because of a lot of deep hitting. So we replaced the lettering also on that. Um, but those uh, pythons come out, they got to look factory and they got to be really shiny to look factory. They're matte blue, bee blasted on the top. We bee blast that just like they were from the factory, just kind of like this little Ruger was. That makes them look factory. We polish the size of the hammer. Uh, we, we're trying to, we're trying to pass this gun as an unblued gun. Uh, the uh, cylinder latch, they are buff shiny. You'll be able to see it real well on the face here. You do that, and you polish off the ratchet on the uh, ejector a little bit. And then that's all the way they came from the factory. Now this gun isn't totally factory. Uh, this, you know, someone's put a red insert in there, which is all right. That's up to them.